Welcome to 5th grade math with Mr. J. So here we are at analyzing patterns and relationships part 1. So what we're going to do in this video, this is an instructional video, and we're going to follow this up with part 2 and then a mastery check, which I will explain later. But here in part 1, we're going to be writing out patterns and then analyzing how those two patterns relate. That might not make any sense as I say it, but as we go through these four examples on your screen, I bet you have it down by the end of this video. So like the rest of my instructional videos, I highly suggest writing these out with me as I go through. I think that will be beneficial to you learning this, but if you just want to watch and listen, that's okay too. So we're going to hop into number one here and see what's going on with these patterns. So we have pattern A and pattern B. We're going to do one at a time and we need to be nice and neat when we line these up. That is key. So let's start with pattern A and I'm going to write an A so I have my pattern labeled here. And all I need to do is follow directions. It says start at zero and add five. So guess what you start with? Zero. Imagine that. And add five each time. Zero, five, ten, fifteen, 20. That pattern goes on forever, but no need to continue on. We'll end it at five terms. Okay, terms is a very important vocab word. Terms are just the numbers you write out in your pattern. So zero is the first term, five is the second, 10 is the third, 15 is fourth, and I bet you you got the hang of it. So let's do B here. So pattern B, we start at two, not zero. Don't start every pattern with, pattern with zero. You have to pay attention to what you're doing and follow the direction. So it says start at two, add five each time. So two, seven, 12, 17, and 22. Those are our terms for pattern B. Now notice the patterns A and B are lined up. The first terms are lined up right above and below each other. The second terms are lined up third, fourth, and fifth. So now that we have our patterns written out, we need to see the relationship between A and B. How do we get A to equal B? And it needs to work for all of them, like a rule. So we have a zero, zero and a two. Think add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Those are your four options. So how do we get zero to equal two? You're probably thinking to yourself, well, add two to zero. Okay, so let's try it. Zero plus two is two, it works for the first term. It needs to work for all of them. Never just check one. At least check the five you have, and if you're, you write even longer patterns, check all of them. Make sure it works for all. Five plus two is seven, works. 10 plus two is 12. 15 plus 2 is 17, 20 plus 2 is 22. It worked for all five of those, so pretty safe to say here that the rule or relationship is adding 2 to pattern A will give us the corresponding terms in pattern B. Now this is a new vocab concept here, corresponding terms. And that means the first terms in the patterns, A and B, these guys are like partners, they're corresponding terms, the 5 and 7, the 10 and 12, and so on. So those are corresponding terms. So you'll see a lot of different types of answers to these. You can write it out as a math problem, like A plus 2 will give you pattern B, something like this. Or maybe you'll have to do it in sentence form, and it will go something like, Pattern A plus two will equal the corresponding terms in pattern B. Or you can even do the opposite. How do you get pattern B or go from the bottom to get A? How do you get two to equal zero? You subtract two, you do the opposite. So B minus two it actually equals A and it will work for all of them. And a sentence for that would be, Pattern, the terms in pattern B minus two will give you the corresponding terms in pattern A. So let's try number two here. We have X and Y. 
x, y, do one pattern at a time. Start at four and add one. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Doesn't get much easier than that as far as patterns. And then we have for y, start at 12, add three, 21, and 24 x and y. So notice the 4 and 12, 5 and 15, 6 and 18, everything's lined up. My terms are lined up. So how do I get 4 to equal 12? You might be thinking, well, 4 plus 8 is 12. But remember, you need to check it has to work for all of them. So let's try the next corresponding terms, 5 and 15. Is 5 plus 8 15? No. 5 plus 8 is 13, so plus 8 or add 8 to x does not work. We need to think of something else. Hint, it's going to be multiplication. How do I get 4 to equal 12? I need to multiply x by 3. So 3x or 3 times x gives me y. 4 times 3 is 12, 5 times 15, or 5 times 3 is 15, 6 times 3 is 18. 7 times 3 is 21, and 8 times 3 is 24. So the terms in pattern x multiplied by 3 will give you the corresponding terms in pattern y, where the opposite would be dividing y by 3 to get the corresponding terms in x. All right, let's do number 3 here. We have c and d. So we start at 30 and subtract 5. Here's our pattern. As I write out D, see if you can notice the relationship between corresponding terms. Start at six, subtract one, so a nice little countdown here. Six, five, four, three, two. All right, so it looks like C, we're starting with 30 and we're going down to six. So we're decreasing in value, so it's either gonna be subtraction or division. Let's try division. 30 divided by 5 is 6. Those are our corresponding terms. Let's try 25 divided by 5 is 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. 15 divided by 5 is 3. And 10 divided by, divided by 5 is 2. So our relationship is pattern C divided by 5 gives us our corresponding terms in pattern D. Or the opposite would be, if we multiply pattern D by five, we'll get pattern C. Remember, a number next to a letter means multiplication. And let's end with number four here. So we start at 42. Oh, I didn't label my pattern. This is M. And we subtract six, so 42. 36, 30, 24, and 18. And then let's do pattern N. And we start at 38 and subtract 6. All right. And it looks like we're decreasing from the top going down to the bottom. So it's either going to be subtraction or division. And 42 minus 4 is 38 for our first set of corresponding terms. 36 minus 4 is 32. 30 minus 4 is 26. 24 minus 4 is 20. And 18 minus 4 is 14. So pattern M minus 4 will give us our corresponding terms in pattern N. Or the opposite, if we go bottom to top, N plus 4 will give us our corresponding terms in pattern M. So those, our, those are our four problems where we analyze the patterns and the relationships in those patterns of the corresponding terms. All right, so I'll see you over at part two where these patterns have a little bit of a different setup, a different look to them, because not all patterns are going to be set up like the way they were on this video. And then we'll follow up part two with a mastery check where you'll try some on your own to see if you have it down. Thanks for watching.